Yeah, so now we will see some basics or basic ideas about electronics lab. This is a preliminary course for all the students who is going to attend the electronics lab or power electronics lab. So uh, from my experience, many students uh, before they come to the lab, they have no idea what is going to be there in the lab. So when I explain things or maybe the lab assistant when he explains, they don't get many points and they keep making mistakes or they just sit without doing anything. So I just want to make it simple for students. So I am preparing this preliminary course. Uh, maybe it's a short one. Please uh, listen to this. So it will help you when you go to the lab. Normally in any kind of lab experiment or lab work needs several things that you should be aware of. First, based on the circuit you are going to build or you are going to test, you need different electronic components. So you should know resistors, capacitors, inductors, diodes, uh, transistors, transformers. There are so many active and passive electronic components available. Usually uh, most of the labs, they have all the components they need for your experiment. So your supervisor, your teacher or your professor, he or she will give you already the circuit that you are going to construct in the lab. So in that circuit, you will already uh, have some idea from the circuit. You will have an idea of what kind of components you will be needed. If you do not know any specific value of the components, you can just ask either the lab assistant or the professor. They will give you an idea. So first, the main thing is you need different components and some connection wires and cables. In some cases, you also need some ICs and you also need breadboard. So all these electronic components are the first and the basic thing you will need in your lab. Now the next. The next one is circuit under test. So this is the circuit you are going to build in your lab work. So there are three different ways to build the circuit. The first one is it can be uh, built on breadboard. This is just a breadboard based circuit. So this is a temporary one. You can just uh, insert the ICs and the components and connect them through the cables. And also you can take it from the oscilloscope and measure the input output waveforms and so on. So this is one of the ways to build the circuit on breadboard. And by the way, you should also know how the breadboard is working. So in the breadboard, we have like a vertical shot and a horizontal shot. Okay, so we are not going to see uh, how the breadboard works. It's very easy. You can just Google it and find it. So this is one method of building the circuit. And the second way is PCB. So you will have this kind of PCB and you will also be given electronic components. So you have to solder the components and the wires, cables, and you have to build the particular circuit which will be given by your professor or your teacher. So this is soldering. So you will have an experience of soldering. And also uh, after you complete the circuit, then you have to do the measurements. So you have to be very careful when you do the soldering. You better first build this circuit in the breadboard and test if everything is okay. Then you just copy the idea from the breadboard and then you can solder the same circuit in the PCB. Of course, you can also unsolder and then you can solder back, but that's not easy and pleasant. This is the second way of building the circuit. The third way of uh, testing the circuit is you will be given already free, uh, prefabricated circuit or prefabricated PCB in your hand. So you have to just connect different uh, points uh, from probe to different points and you can measure the input and output. Of course, you have to give the power supply and you can measure the input and output or uh, the waveform at different 
potential points in the circuit so the circuit is very important first you should know what circuit you are going to build in the lab and what components you will be needed and you need to have all those things the components and also the breadboard or the pcb then you will be ready to construct or to build the circuit so you are building or constructing this circuit to test so we simply call this as a circuit under test so you are going to test this circuit and now you know you need electronic components and you need pcbs or breadboard other than that you also need different equipments so the equipments are helping you to make the measurements to complete the experiment so why are you doing any experiment on the circuit because you want to measure the voltage current across uh, different devices or at the input side or at the output side right so that is the goal of the experiment so you are building the circuit and you are checking some parameters so in order to check in order to measure uh, several parameters or different parameters you need different equipments for example the first one of the major equipment is dc power supply so it can be a variable dc power supply uh, it can be the dual dc power supply anyway so you will have you must need this kind of dc power supply maybe you need plus 5 volt or maybe you need plus 10 volt or you need just plus 3 volt so you can set whatever the value you want and sometimes you may also need ac power supply that is mostly about uh, induction motors or the, uh, the electrical machines related experiments and if you want to step up this normally we are getting only 230 volt right so that is our typical normal power supply 230 volt so you can step up you can step up or step down this one so 230 volt i can step up to 440 volt or i can just step down these two whatever the value i want by using the transformer so when you go to this kind of machines laboratory you have to be very careful so because here we are using high voltage and also power electronics lab the same so you may be using high voltage high power so you, the safety instructions are very important follow the safety instructions given by your lab assistant or technical assistant or uh, whoever the technical staff will be there so the first one is the dc power supply you need so dc power supply will look like this so usually there will be multi channels or multiple power supplies so for example here from here you can take power supply one so maybe here you can take five volt uh, another one so here you can take the 10 volt or uh, here you can take another uh, value so it's up to you so how many channels are available in your power source so depending on that you can take different uh, supply voltage and taking uh, the output from here and then you can giving uh, to your circuit under test so of course first you have to turn on the switch and then you can set the voltage and current value for your cut circuit under test so he, you, you can see the knobs so for example this one have only two power supplies so this is for the power supply one and this is for the power supply two so for the power supply one you can set up the voltage value this is v and this is the current value ampere and he, here also the same for the channel two so initially always remember keep all the voltages and uh, uh, current value as zero or as low as possible and then you can slightly uh, increase the voltage and current so in that way you will not destroy your circuit and circuit components this is the dc power supply and the second one is the cro the cro what the cro is doing in the lab so normally it helps to display and measure the input and output waveforms so whatever the circuit you have you are applying the input voltage maybe you are applying the plus 5 volt dc so when you give this plus and minus to the circuit as an input you can also take here for example the probe is connected to this oscilloscope the probe will also have two uh, wires or the cables that you can connect here at this uh, input uh, terminals 
uh, these points then you will see this plus 5 volt in this uh, display of the oscilloscope and similarly for the output also you will have uh, usually the oscilloscope will have more than one channels maybe here we have two channels so the second channel you can take the you can also connect the probe and then you can check at the output side so what output you are getting from this circuit so if the circuit functions well then it will work as it's supposed to work then you will get the correct expected output that also you can view in this display so that is the use of the oscilloscope so uh, it's not only just displaying the waveforms it's you can also measure what is the amplitude amplitudes are measured vertically and what is the frequency frequency is measured horizontally right so for one cycle what is the time so if you know the time value then frequency is equal to 1 divided by t that is the frequency value so how to measure the ac voltage how to measure dc voltage how to measure frequencies by using oscilloscope that is another uh, small topic i can uh, talk about that separately but right now so what do you need to do the experiment in the lab so this is another second important equipment cro you must need and the third one is the function generator what is the use of function generator function generator it generates different waveforms these waveforms can be applied as an input to circuit under test so at the input side of the circuit whatever the circuit you have maybe here you have some kind of circuit you built so these are the input terminals so instead of giving just any kind of voltage you can apply a specific waveform shape so the function generator the beauty of the function generator is you can set whatever the shape you want you want a square wave or triangular wave or sawtooth wave or whatever the shape you want you can set in the settings and also you can set up the frequency 1 kilohertz or 2 kilohertz or megahertz it's up to you or it's up to the experiment uh, requirement and also you can set up the amplitude 1 volt or 2 volt or 3 volt or 5 volt so whatever the amplitude you can set up so in the settings of the function generator you can set all these values or parameters and then you can apply to this circuit under test for example if you build some kind of a differentiator circuit or integrated circuit it's very obviously you can see if you apply for example square uh, square wave at the output you may get triangular wave and so on so that is uh, the use of this function generator and one more important equipment is multimeter most uh, mostly many students know already about the multimeter even in our home sometimes we may use, we may need this multimeter so multimeter can help you to measure the voltage uh, it can be ac voltage or dc voltage it's not a matter so you can just use this knob either ac side or dc side or it can also help you to measure the current values and it can also measure resistance values so this multimeter is something similar to oscilloscope in oscilloscope we are seeing in terms of waveforms and then we have to calculate from the waveforms the value of the voltage and current but in multimeter ah, it's very easy you do not need to make any calculations or you don't need to get confusions so very simply it will show the value directly of course in the multimeter there are two types analog multimeters and digital multimeters but nowadays no one or uh, no, almost um, many people do not prefer to use analog multimeter they prefer to use a digital multimeter so it will directly show the exact value it's very easy for you to record and make the calculations in the lab right so that's all about the multimeter uh, so and also another major function of the multimeter is you can check the continuity continuity of the wires or cables or conductors this is very very important function uh, maybe when we do the lab experiments i i will explain that if needed for us in our, our in our experiments and one more last thing is probes probes are 
generally helping us to connect equipments with circuit under test so there are so many different types of probes we also have current probes and so on so uh, right now we do not need to confuse the probes are just helping us to connect the equipments with our circuit under test so that's all uh, you need to know so before you come to the lab first of all you should know or you should have some knowledge these are the major things which is available in the lab for your experiment before using the experiment of course you need to build the circuit if you want to build the circuit you first you have to decide you are going to uh, solder and create the circuit or you are just going to build temporarily on the breadboard or your teacher is going to give you this kind of prefabricated pcb already ready to use and you should also need these components to build the circuit so any normal lab work must need these components this circuit under test these components and this circuit under test and these equipments so in the lab practically we can see how this each equipment is working and how can you use it practically okay so that's the normal way of doing lab work it's not a matter it's electrical machines lab or electronics lab or power electronics lab uh, this is kind of similar procedure uh,